everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create. Today we're going to work on Farmhouse from Graphic 45. So I'm going to get started with page one. We're just getting started here. I think I've got most of my design work done. Um, so it's now time to start constructing, although I might make a few changes as we go. I haven't decided. So this is going to have two interactive features. Um, there's going to be um, two large flaps on one side and then we're going to have a cascading waterfall on the other and the waterfall features are four by six and a half and you're going to use five of those you're going to have four that come down and the fifth one is going to come up over the top that's not it's not what i wanted one two three four five yeah the top one's going to come up over um, to secure the actual waterfall in place like so um, so now I just need to make up my mind. This is page one. Which side do I want next to the spine? I think I want the large flaps next to the spine and the waterfall um, toward the, uh, the pocket there. So I'm going to dry fit this real fast. Looks like I've got my tape on. The large flaps are four. I'm sorry. I don't know why I said four. They're six by eight. Six by eight. And you're going to score half inch. Six by eight. So I'm just going to check and make sure that it fits and it does. And I kind of went back and forth when I was designing this on whether or not I wanted a space between the spine and the flap. But because I've got a hinge going next to the spine, I don't think I need a space. So I'm going to adhere it directly to the edge of page one pocket. Um, and it's going to be installed on the left hand side which is also the spine side. Okay, so that's in. So now the next piece is just gonna butt up right next to it, and it, they're, it's gonna open left, right. And so the way I wanna place this is I want it to close. So basically I'm gonna rest the hinge on the top of the open flap and take the backing off and then lay it down. That is the plan. But first, let's make sure It's not wider than the page, I was just checking. Okay. So again, I'm just slipping it on, resting it right on the edge of the page. And hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. So there's the hinge, there's the page. I'm gonna let it rest. I'm gonna curl that down, just so it's easy to place once I close the flap. And then I'm going to close the flap And there is my placement. So, I mean, there's other ways to try to do it, but I find that that gives me the snuggest fit and it uh, it just seems pretty easy for me to do. Okay, so now the waterfall features are gonna go in and they're gonna go in on the right-hand side. Flush with the edge of the paper and then what I'm gonna wind up doing is putting a decorative strip here, a half-inch strip in between. And actually, I'm trying to think if I want to put my strip down first. So let's think about that for a second. Do I know what I want? I do. I think I'm going to go ahead and lay my, my flaps down. Nope, I'm not. Change my mind. I'm going to go ahead and cut a half inch strip and I'm going to use this um, is it? It's kind of like chicken wire, I guess. I'm going to lay it down first. So it's going to get butted up right against this hinge. And let me strip, get a piece of that real quick. Easier said than done. <laughs> and right now I'm using, if I can find it, I'm going to cut a strip off the 12 by 12, because I like the pattern. It's a little bit larger. Oh, the scale of the pattern is a little larger. I know I have some. Where is it? I thought I had cut into it already. There it is. All right. 
I do have it. Okay, so I'm just going to cut a one inch strip off and then we're going to make it um, seven and seven eighths inch tall. A half inch by seven and seven eighths. <clears throat> Easier said than done. Okay, let's do it this way. There's my half inch mark. pencil. Again, this is a half inch by seven and seven eighths. And if you ever want to just make sure that your strip is equal all the way down, you just fold it. Uh, you don't have to crease it, but pull it in half, put the two ends together, and they should be the same width. And sometimes I test that, especially when I'm trimming off a slim piece of paper where it's easy for it to torque in the trimmer. Okay, so I'm going to get some ink on this real quick and lay it down, and we'll finish getting the rest of the flaps in for page one. I should have had this pre-trimmed, but honestly, I kept going back and forth on whether or not to put a quarter inch strip here and a quarter inch here, um, but I think this is going to make a cleaner look. So, hope everybody's doing well. I know everybody's starting to go stir crazy. We're hearing from lots of you guys stuck at home, and we're doing our best to try to keep content flowing because I know this is a good time to get some crafting done because there's not much else we can get done. So our shop, our shop is still uh, open. It's an online store, and as long as um, you know we can get uh, somebody to deliver the postage, you know we'll try to keep shipping. Um, so far, our suppliers have been uh, able to get product to us, so we're able to get it to you. So hopefully that that doesn't get interrupted anytime soon. Even if it does, we've got a lot of stuff in stock as long as the U.S. Postal Service continues to deliver parcels. I think we're good for a little while. Anyway, thanks. It's good to hear from you guys. I'm glad everybody's uh, paying attention to the news and doing the right thing and staying home. Um, I know it's not easy. It's a, it's one thing to stay home from by choice. It's another <laughs> when you're told you have to stay home. I have a 17-year-old son, and he is just having the hardest time um, trying to stay home. He's got a girlfriend, so that's one thing that's making it difficult, but um, it's just hard when you're 17 to stay home, and I don't blame him. If you guys are like, like me, my husband is the master of the remote, so it's whatever he wants to watch on TV, and that's how I got involved in crafting in the first place. We don't have the same taste in television programming. He's a news watcher, and I just can't take that. I can't take watching news all day. So I turn to crafts. I'm not a big TV watcher anyways. I like movies. Predictable outcomes. Okay, so you can see that I've kind of gone over that a little bit, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to um, go ahead and install it ahead of time because I had a feeling that the flap might... Oops, that grabbed a little too quick. The flap might actually overlay slightly. Okay, that's close enough. Okay, so when I'm laying this down, what am I doing? I'm, it looks like I'm all over the place. Part of it is I'm trying to get a nice tight seam here, but the other thing is I want to make sure that this is not drifting off the edge of the page or too far over uh, to the, uh, the opposite side. 
because you can't necessarily guarantee that this is square. Um, so what I'm trying to do is square it to the page, not necessarily to the flap above it. So it's a little bit of both. And that matters because when they lay on top of each other, if they don't cascade together, it, it, it's pretty obvious. <clears throat> So it's a little tedious, but it's worth taking the extra time. Okay, so that's three, so this is four, this is our last one. And then we're gonna flip it upside down and one's gonna come from the bottom up. And then that's pretty much the design features for page one, uh, except we still have to get our um, magnets in. Now this one I can see is drifting further and further over. So there's a couple things we can do. We can lift them and re realign them, or we can straighten them and adjust the, uh, slightly adjust the uh, score line, which I think is what I'm gonna try to do. So I'm pushing the edge of the flap to the edge of the pocket page, and I'm gonna try to redo my score line and push that up a little bit so that it'll go straighter. And that's it. Okay, it's still drifting a little, but it's not as much as it was, so I'm happy with that. And then also, that's not the end of it. We're gonna add this flap going up, so some of that's gonna be masked behind this last flap. And like I said, if you're really unhappy, get out your undo and um, lift up your tape and then redo it. And if you don't have undo, um, I would strongly suggest buying it. Um, now, here's a secret I heard from a craft show, and I'm not sure if it's true, but undo... Um, I don't know really what's in it, but it feels kind of oily when you apply it to your, your product, and it, it releases the adhesive on tape, not on glue, just on tape. And um, because I live in California, and we have so many regulations, environmental regulations, I've heard that the formula for people that are selling undo in California is different than the original formula, and it's not quite as good. So if you buy it, buy it from somebody outside of California and have it shipped to you. And I think you get the original formula, which is a little bit better. So don't quote me on that, but that's what I've heard. And it makes sense to me living in California, we do have a ton of regulations. So I could see that if there's some chemical in it that California has issue with, that they would make them reformulate it for here. But anyway, so there we are. I'm gonna go over the me measurements one more time. So we have two of these large flaps that are six by eight, six inches across and eight inches down. You're gonna score a half inch on the six inch side. You've got two of those. You've got five flaps um, that are four by six and a half, four inches across, six and a half inches down. And you're gonna score a half inch across the six and a half inch side. And it's gonna lay like this. So this is how it's gonna close. So I'm ready to place my magnets. So <laughs> I know it's hard to see, but this is my top, and I need to get a contrast sheet out for you guys. Um, the bottom up flap is what's gonna hold the waterfall in place. And I just made them all the same size, but honestly, they don't have to be the same size. The rest of my waterfalls are coming down from the top. This one's coming up from the bottom. So we're gonna place a magnet here and one on this side, and that's what's gonna hold our waterfall in place. And I think I'm gonna start by placing this one. And as usual, I, I prefer to have my magnets not on the top if I can avoid it. It's not that big of a deal. Um, but you can sometimes see a bump in your paper, so I prefer to have it on the inside. The other reason is then the magnet doesn't have to pass through designer paper, cardstock, another piece of designer paper, and then hit the magnet on the other side. So I always try to get the two magnets as close together as possible with only two pieces of designer paper between them, one on each side. That's the goal, um, just because they'll they'll just the attraction will be so much stronger. 
it doesn't always work out that way, but that's that's kind of the thought process. Okay, now I have to make a decision about how I want this to open. And originally I had it, I installed it uh, this way with this one on top, but really I think I want it to open this way because I want that the finished hinge edge next to the spine. I don't want a loose edge of a flap over here where it could potentially get caught into the the gusset area. So I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to have the left side flap over the right side and close this way. It's still really a strong, it's just a preference thing. So if you guys don't like that and want to flip the other way, it's, it's, it doesn't change anything except for where you mount your magnets. All right, and I think I'm just gonna put it on the edge here. And I'm using 5 8 inch tape. The, the, my two go-tos are 3 8 and I use that for my hinge. It's just slightly less than, uh, well, it's an eighth of an inch less than a half inch. All my gussets are half inch. If I was doing an, a one inch um, hinge, I might use wider tape, but I always use half inch. And that's just always worked for me. Some people do one inch. It's really, you know, you could go either way. Okay, all I'm trying to do now is come in far enough that I don't have to worry about um, my magnet being exposed past the designer paper. And the other thing I wanna do right here is I wanna get away from the middle. And the reason why I wanna get away from the middle is I don't know if I'm gonna do some color blocking. And when I color block, it's typically in thirds or in halves. So I want to steer clear of that halfway mark because this is a this is a big piece of paper, right? This is five and a half by eight. That's that's one large piece of pattern. So I might want to color block it. So I think I'm going to come up. I'm going to go ahead and use my ruler instead of guessing. So there's my halfway mark right there. So I'm going to come up about right here and that way like I said if I decide to color block my magnets not going to be in the way or it's not going to cause me to change my design and of course you really don't have to install your magnets now although I have found that when I don't install them early on I have been known to lay a mat down and forget to put my magnet in so a lot of times I like to do that early on you can always move it later. It's just tape. You can lift it and wherever it's laying, it's going to get covered by designer paper anyway. So I'm not really too worried about even lifting some of the paper here if that happens. Okay, so there we are. And this needs to fold down a little bit because it keeps catching on the corner. It's short enough, but I had a, it was flipped up a little. So there we go. There is page one. Um, our next step is to start decorating. I'll be back soon. Hi everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we are getting together today to work on farmhouse. And so what I have sitting in front of me is um, some of the designer paper that I've chosen for page one. And I wanna point out that I'm using the signature page from the eight by eight here on page one. That's why we see the smaller scale. Um, and I'm gonna apply that to the top flap here, which opens, um, toward the spine and I think I've got most everything trimmed out and ready to go so with that I'm going to sit down I'm going to go ahead and get this one put in first sit down I may need to do some trimming on the waterfall feature I'm honestly not sure I've kind of lost track of where I'm working the pages out of order so I've lost track of which ones I've already um, tested trimmed and inked and which ones still need work but let's go ahead and get started. Again, this is from the 8x8 collection pack. It's the signature page. And it works here because of the scale. And a lot of times I'll use the signature page on the cover of the album but I've decided I'm not gonna do that, so I don't mind using it inside the album at all. Lovely, lovely. So this would be really hard to put a photo on unless you put one right here where the farmhouse is. Um, I'd have a hard time covering this up, but 
Having said that, there's plenty of room inside for photos. So it's even if you don't decide to decorate this one, you've got a lot of room to work with on the inside. Okay, I have a couple of choices to make for the inside. So I kind of like the chickens here. And this is one option and that's the other. Yeah. And I'm thinking for sure the chickens are gonna go in the middle, so let's go ahead and ink. It looks like it's trimmed out. I'm gonna ink it and we'll lay it down. This is from the 8x8 collection pack as well. look to yeah these will need to be trimmed This is the other option, but I wasn't crazy about that. It's pretty busy. Um, you're gonna put photos on it anyway, so I think it works either way, but I think I like the black side up better. will do it. Yes, it does. Oops. A little clumsy there.
This pretty sure is patterns and solids. I should keep the covers in here so I can reference them, but they're in the other room. Not handy at the moment. Okay. So there's our inside spread. I'll get my little excess glue off here. And, and of course we already have the cover done, so now we need to choose a pattern for here. And I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet. Um, I've got a couple of options. I have this and I have this. And I'm planning on pulling in the yellow for the outside because it picks up the yellow over here. So this is the outside. So let's see, what do we like better? This or this? I think I like this. It's pretty subtle, but I like it. All right, I am going to use the contrast sheet so I can see the edge a little better. And I need to trim a little off the height and width. is midday here and I think I'm gonna go ahead and get this piece in and then take a break have some lunch come back and then we'll work on the waterfall feature I think that looks nice. It's pretty subtle, but I like it. Okay, when I come back, we will work on the waterfall feature. And I think that's gonna look lovely. Okay, be right back, guys. Hey everyone, it's Daphne, and uh, I just got back from lunch, and when I walked away, I went ahead to and reviewed my footage from the last few minutes before lunch and realized I had not turned the video on. So this is the never ending problem with this album. I don't know what my dealio is, but I'm gonna go back over what I did um, while, the, while the camera was not rolling. So I had already shown you guys these, but I put the yellow pieces on the A side and I started laying out the B side. <clears throat> and so on the very inside, I've got the two red and then I've got this piece. So I finished those, there's the back side of the yellow. And then I did an alternating waterfall of red, cream, red, and cream uh, for the B side of the waterfall. And I am working to finish that up. Okay, so those are all done. Now we are focused on finishing the rest of the A side. So I've got the yellow, the red, this should be cream again. And now I'm looking around, it seems like I'm short one piece of paper. So I'm gonna have to trim out one more piece of paper. Um, no, it's on the it's on the paper trimmer. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's see, have I already trimmed it? Telling you guys, this album got me all messed up. So it looks like I trimmed it, but not enough. So I'm gonna take a little more off. And 
I'm going to stand up and make sure the camera's rolling, and it is. I, I've got to do something about that. I've got um, got to figure out how to um, leverage my iPad so that I can Bluetooth to it or whatever and see what's actually happening on the screen, because right now I'm underneath the camera, so I can't see it. And if I change that, then you guys are too close to my surface to see things in context. So... I gotta spend some time on that. It just is one of those things that falls to the bottom. So when I'm not working on the album, I'll usually wanna spend some time looking at um, web stuff for the, um, for the store or our social media stuff or answer comments or whatever. So those all come ahead of trying to figure out how to better uh, manage uh, the actual live, but uh, the recording of my videos. Part of it's because I know I don't know what to do, and I'm gonna. There's a learning curve, and so I keep avoiding it. But it really needs to get done. I tried a simple Bluetooth to the phone to see if I could get that to work, and it didn't work the way I expected. So that wasn't gonna do it. So I know I'm gonna have to put some more effort into it. Okay. So our last one is this red piece, and it needs to be trimmed. <clears throat> it actually looks like it might be a little too wide too. I'm checking. We could take a smidge off. That's a technical term, smidge. All right, now we're ready. <clears throat> so the good news is there's nothing unique here. It's just alternating the pattern and you didn't have to sit through all the installation. You still get the gist of it. So I go back and forth on whether or not to do what some other YouTubers do, which is just fast forward through some of the repetition, but then I don't get to babble on. <laughs> I, when you fast forward and you're talking, it makes funny noises. So you guys let me know in the comments. If you'd like me to fast forward through some of this stuff, I can do that. I can I can be quiet. Can I? Can she? <laughs> and uh, fast forward through some of the more repetitive things. Um, if you guys find that useful, of course, you always can fast forward too. Um, just from your console on your laptop, you can decide to, to skip over or go faster if you want. So I get some mixed messages, but I'd like to hear from you guys on that. Some people like to see the whole thing, um, and other people are like, just just get to the point, and uh, that's it. Okay, so I'm going to walk through this, especially since a good portion of that last feature I did not film. But first, I'm going to cap my glue. Okay, so we have this nice double flap here and then this is a drop down which is holding this waterfall in place and I'm just alternating the red and ivory there we go and then we've got this other design feature right here and again I might come back and add some red strips here or even yellow just for to make it pop haven't decided but I'm not going to do it while um, I'm recording if I decide to do that I'll do it offline so that is the end of page one Again, uh, I want to remind you that this is from the 8x8 eight eight collection pack, so it's a much smaller scale. The 12x12, 12 12, um, pretty much the cow head would have taken up the whole thing. It would have been a little bit too much. Um, it is going to be hard to put a photo here uh, because of the design, but if you did put a photo, it would naturally kind of sit on top of this space right here, which is... I don't know, what is that, three? You could probably, you could fit a three by three by four photo right there if you if you so decided. Otherwise, there's plenty of photo space in here and you won't feel a bit bad about covering up any of the black. Okay, that's it for now. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create and this is the end of page one.